Hey guys, now this is another video request and the question that I got is, Daniel, can a Christian drink alcohol? Well, it doesn't really matter what I believe, it doesn't really matter what other people believe. It matters what the Bible says about it. So let's get to the video. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. Consider subscribing and also clicking that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, the Bible is very clear about alcohol and drinking alcohol and getting drunk. There's a lot of verses about this and the Bible is very clear that it is wrong to get drunk. Ephesians 5 verse 18 says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. And Proverbs 20 verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Now that verse actually explains who I was. I was not wise. I was dumb. Before I became a Christian, I used to drink a lot. And, but then when I became a Christian, you know, God is so gentle and He works within you all those things that is not right, that is not in line with His will for your life. And so I stopped drinking because number one, it is a sin and number two, it was part of my old sinful lifestyle. 1 Peter 4 verse 3 says, For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness. So I stopped getting drunk all the time, but I still enjoy a wine here or there with my wife, for example, when we have dinner, because it's not wrong to drink alcohol, but it is wrong to get drunk. Ecclesiastics 9 verse 7 says, Go, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart. And remember, they even used wine for medicine. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5 verse 23, No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for the stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. And do you remember the first miracle that Jesus did? He turned water into wine at the wedding in John 2. And Psalm 104 verse 4 says, He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man. Now you need to know that even though you can enjoy wine, the Bible is very, very clear in the dangers that lies behind it. Proverbs 23 verse 29 says, Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine, do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. Now God knows the devastating effect that alcohol has on people, especially if we look at the family. When a parent is addicted to alcohol, I have personally witnessed how families are destroyed because of alcohol. And that is also one of the reasons why I will never drink in front of someone who I know loves drinking because I don't want to cause them to stumble and to keep on sinning. Romans 14 verse 13 says, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Now you got to remember a lot of people who are alcoholic, who, who who drink, they go to the bottle for a reason. They go there to forget about all the problems in their lives. So they do that instead of choosing God who actually has the power to help them. They choose the bottle. They drink, they get drunk, and after a few hours they wake up and their problems are still there. The cycle just continues and it gets worse. Now if you're a Christian, if you say that you are a true Christian, but you make the decision to continually drink. So you make the decision to continually sin. You need to know that you might not enter into the kingdom of God. Galatians 5 verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. Idolatry, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders. Now listen to this, drunkenness revelries and the like. 
of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now this is very clear, but you need to understand this. If you continue to drink and get drunk and feel that it is okay, it's fine, and you wanna keep on doing it, then you're probably not a real Christian because a real Christian would not want to do anything on this list because the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin. But if you are a Christian, remember we are not perfect and we will fall at times. But then we need to go to God. We need to ask for forgiveness. We need to make it right. And then you need to stop because just saying, oh, I have a sinful nature and God is love. He forgives me. That is no excuse. God says you cannot continue to live in sin. So throw away all the alcohol bottles in your home right now. Throw it away and go to someone that you can trust, someone who can pray for you and someone who can help you. Don't let it rip your family apart because that is not what God wants. That is what the devil wants. And he's like a lion walking around, roaring, looking who he can destroy. Don't let it happen. Take a stand and fight against this with the power of God. The choice is yours. Either you're going to go with the devil and believe the lies that you cannot overcome this, or you're going to believe God's word and know that you can overcome this, not through yourself, not through your own power, but through the power of God. Luke 1 verse 37 says, For with God, nothing will be impossible. Now, if you want to know how to overcome sin, then check out this video here and it will help you. Now, remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.